fucking weight drop. The lights must go out 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 drop.
All right. From Tel Aviv, Israel, the most illegal person in the room, Miss Uni Baharani. Right here. International law cannot stop the world inferno. Of all the things that could stop us, that's not I'd like to dedicate this next song to Mr. Frank Sutherland. He's a fuck up. He's a fuck up. He kills things. He sneaks in the bars. And I'm happy to thank him. Clowns must.
the world of fellow freshman side here, how do you do? We just drove in from, from Brooklyn and everyone said, where the hell are we going? I said, just take exit nine, I know the way home from exit nine. And they didn't believe me and I said, you know, just follow the mighty Raritan River. Find the mighty Raritan and we'll flood our way right into Bound Brook. And whatever I feel, whatever I hear from Mighty Rare Town, I think of Mr. Ooh. I think of Mr. Paul Roberson. <laughs> Punk rock heroes who never gave us anything but a Yo, bass vocal for my time. This one goes out to Mr. Jeffrey Lee.
next one goes out to the girls. This next one goes out to the girls. You know, I moved away from New Jersey such a long time ago. You do. However, every important thing I ever learned in life was from a girl. Every important thing I ever learned in life was from New Jersey. Every reason I'm obnoxious enough to say what I mean happened here. This one goes out to the rich This one is for the lady.
Somerset County? Let him get arrested. <laughs> Karen, if you're in here, go out front and there's gonna be problems. Thank you. Sorry His to bother you. The Tell them all to come in. Sorry to bother you. I think I've done enough for this county. I think this whole county owes me a little bit, owes a little bit of thing. I shut down Bridgewater High School East. I fired the principal whose name was Mr. John Scott. There was a sheriff that is no longer working in New Jersey because of me. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but you know what? This, hold, hold on, this, Jack, one second. Karen this, Lanigan, come to the front of the place. I invite all the police. I believe all, I invite all the DAs. I invite everyone here back to my house after this show for just the best.
let the police come along as soon as you arrive. Lucky's gonna play on this next song. You know what? I lived here for 20 years. I never cared about the police coming to my house. I never cared about the police knocking on my door. If I was to live in fear of the police my whole life, well, what kind of man would I be? Not that kind of man. Do I look like some sort of nervous cat? No. The police have to do their job, and I have to do mine. My job involves breaking stuff. My job involves making rooms too hot than they're supposed to be. My job involves making young people do fucked up things. And that's why I'm here. And if they want to follow me all the way back to Brooklyn, they're more than welcome to. This next song goes back to the police. We have a rental van, it's black. The license plate says M-A-U-R-A-C-O-U-R-R-I-G-N. This next song is from Miss Mark Corgan, it's called The Naughty Little Rat Pisses Off the Police. Uh -huh. Celsius, friends, don't be afraid to have opinions, don't be afraid to be wrong, don't be afraid to be angry, don't be afraid to have grudges. Oh, I
fire. I want you to look at the person next to you. Oh heavens yes. This next song is make friends. I want you to look at the person next to you and decide what it is you have against them. If you cannot decide what you have against them, it's much easier to say what you have for them. I want you to hold out your hand to them as I'm holding my hand out to you and ask them to dance and say, we're all gonna die. Why not dance before we go? Heart attack, what? Just give me a sec, I'll go Let me rap for the models on this 
Good night, friends. Give my regards to some of the Give me four bucks and you can have that. Give it. Give me the four. Do it. <laughs> I want the four dollars now. I am. I am. We're rich. We're rich. Give me the money. Give it. Ah, goodbye. <laughs> Whatever you want, just take it. Get the new one. You got, you got, you got the old one. Uh, Yo, do you have this on vinyl? Are you going to put it on vinyl? This half of it's on that. No, we're not. Half it's that. We're not going to put the rest of it on. Okay, what do you want to talk about? I'm going to be glamorous. It's a center. What do you want to know about? About Bridgewater? What do you want to know about Bridgewater? What do you want to know about people I know who died, about the time the cops came and got us, about Bridgewater High School East? About the gangs over there that used to be. You want to know about when the time I shot President Reagan again, again, and again? All right, I'll tell you about that. I used to, I went, I grew up here in Bridgewater. I went to a high school called East. It's not there anymore. The first year I went there, I was, when I was a freshman, and we weren't punk rock yet. We we're kind of proto punks. We we're like kind of militia men. We all had uh, wore a lot of camouflage and had guns like. Uh, but little guns, like 20, 20 millimeter rifles for shooting s s squirrels and whatnot. And we'd go up on the mountains, up above Washington Valley Road, and look out across the night and think there's no other punk rocks in the world at all. But this was still 1988, like, and there were. We just didn't know them. So a year, so a year later, over that summer, we discovered other punk rocks over in, over in New Brunswick, which is over that way. And we were like the craziest fucking punk rocks. And the, and the people in New Brunswick, they were like artsy people. They were into Mason Gross. They were art punk rocks. And we were like hardcore, motherfucking angry people with guns, right? I know Bridgewater doesn't seem that way anymore. This is before them all. Before all that, we were like, like hillbillies. We were hillbilly punk rocks. And we were as angry, sh shaved heads, weird, like, you know, Mohawk on this side, like shaved heads out that, with like tiny little guns we made ourselves and stealing our parents' liquor. But we got a car and we went over to, to New Brunswick and there's all these Mason Gross art school student girls who were very, very pretty. And over the summer between freshman year and sophomore year, the pretty, pretty hot college girls with a mushroom head haircut, something like this. So sophomore year happens, right? And we're cool as shit, cool as shit. Me and Garrett O'Brien and and, and Rich O'Neill and, and Dave Franklin from Vision. We all like, got like older girlfriends who come. They're college girls who pick us up from school in the afternoon. We're like, so cool. So we're hanging out. Gym class, gym class. You go to gym class, if you had, had a girlfriend who was a drive-in from New Brunswick. We'd hang out in gym. I'd have to run around the track in gym class. We'd kiss, mm, all that. One time in gym class, and this is the story, and this is the story, and I'm just gonna tell it one more time. One time, during gym, I fight with my girlfriend, she doesn't come to pick me up. The older 19-year-old girl doesn't come to pick me up. So I'm pissed off, so I'm calling, I'm, I'm, just, I'm pissed off, I don't have money for lunch, I'm making phone calls, I call her, I call her, I'm calling Collect, she won't, she won't answer the phone, but I call Collect, and finally the telephone operator comes on, hello, hello, can I help you? Hello, your call isn't being answered, what can I do for you, sir? And I say, fuck you. I shot President Reagan, I'm gonna do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, right? Because it's funny. Because my girlfriend went to the phone, it's funny, still some tendencies. What do I know? I hang up the phone, I go to lunch, I eat a piece of chocolate cake. Cake, chocolate cake. Next thing I know, the school is surrounded by policemen. The whole school, they call the school at the half day, everyone go home. Later. The librarian. You think you can trust librarians? You think they're like nice people that you can, nice lady, sure, they're 45 year old virgins or whatever. Says, I saw a young cloth over by the telephones about the time 
that someone said, I shot President Reagan again, 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 again. The joke is, of course, President Reagan was actually in Princeton going, well, I don't know, I think we should do whatever the big business says we should do, and ha ha. And so the Secret Service came to high school. The principal of the school, his name was John Scott, the principal of the school, of Bridgewater High School East, John Scott says, I know you did it, you're in big trouble. Everyone, I said, John, John, can I call you John? How about we just keep this between you and me? He goes, he had just been beaten up by the Secret Service. The Secret Service came, beat up the principal of my high school. He beat him up. They said, you don't know what you're dealing with. I said, John, suspend me. Do whatever you want. Let's not tell the Secret Service. It was a big joke. Ha ha. John Scott was in over his head. He said, go home. I'm never going to bother to suspend you because the Secret Service are coming to take you away. I went home. I was living with my uh, mom and dad and my grandparent, my, my grandmother at the time. And my grandmother was the only one home and I, she said, what's the matter? And I said, I'm in big trouble. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, as a joke, I picked up the phone and said, I shot President Reagan. And I'm going to do it again, 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 again. And the police came and the Secret Service came. And I'm in really big trouble. I don't know what to do. And she said, and she said my grandmother said, she said, oh, no, no, why all run? Run! Get out of the house! Please, get out the back of the window. I'll hold your parents up. Just get out of here. You're in big, big trouble. So I did. I jumped out the back window. And my mother came home and said, what's going on? And I jumped out. I ran and ran. I ran in the woods. And I stayed in the woods. I ran the thing. The, and the Secret Service came. They hassled my parents. They threw them against the... They, I didn't go home for two days. I lived on top of a roof in Somerville, which is that way. Somerville, New Jersey. Eventually the police found me because you can't just sleep in a goddamn roof, can you? And they took me home. And my parents yelled and screamed and 21-year-old Secret Service agents came. They were t I, was, I was 14, they were 21. They said, did you say you're going to shoot President Reagan and you'll do it again and again and again? I said, yes, I did. They said, what the hell are you thinking? I said, well, it's a song. It's a record. It's a song. I didn't, blah, blah. And they went, yeah, I can't believe that someone would have a record that said, I shot President I said, no, I have it. I have it. And I took out the suicide attendance record because I was scared at this point because these people had guns. I gave them my suicide record. We played it in my room and said, I, I, I shot Reagan. I shot Sadat. I shot the devil. All that. They took my record, they put it in a, uh, an evidence bag, and they went away and they said, you know, I'm going to see President Reagan tonight. Tonight, I'm going to see President Reagan. Is there anything you want me to tell him? And I said, tell him I think he's doing a really bad job. And he said, you, want, you're gonna, you a 14-year-old punk rock from New Jersey, want me to tell the president who I'm seeing tonight that you think he's doing a really bad job. And I said, yes. And the Secret Service left, and they took all my punk rock records, and they never gave them back. And I was on probation for until I was 21. And I could not quit high school, even though I wanted to very desperately, because I was on probation. And that's my story. What's up? You're on? <laughs>